Greetings, beautiful souls. Welcome to 5D Life. Now let's talk about cosmic consciousness, earthbound spirits, and God's consciousness. So we will begin with earthbound spirits. What are earthbound spirits? Those are these lost souls within this world who did not cross to the other side. When you, are, when you pass away, whenever it is expected, or whenever it's the shocking event, you always get assistance from the other side, from what we call heaven. You have an assistant of beautiful light, angelic beings, your family, soul family, literally helping you to cross that bridge to the other side and receive healing, receive the understanding of your life. And it is a beautiful journey. But there are those souls who, for whatever reason, refuse this journey. They say, no, no, I'm not ready. I'm not going. And the reason may be that they have an unfinished business, whenever it's good or bad. They may feel like they need to help the family or the children, or they are just afraid to go to the other side because they may believe they will go to hell. Now, there may be many other various reasons why they do not cross on the other side. But when they don't cross the other side, that's where the problem arises. Now, you may wonder why they do not automatically go to the other side. Why there's not like something like a vacuum, right? That suck the soul when it's ready and just ship it up to heaven. Well, the reason is that in this universe, we have a free will. And you may wonder, okay, I heard so much about the free will. Free will is not that I click my fingers and here it magically appears whatever I want. Free will means that I can choose my feelings. And based on my feelings, I can choose the actions that's going to come out of it. And that all takes a little time, right? But the feelings is our free will choice. This is something that is part of this cosmic consciousness. Now the cosmic consciousness is a memory field, right? So within this memory field, we can start remembering about the free will and how does free will work. Now, if the souls make a feeling that they do not want to go on the other side, they are afraid, they are sad, or they love somebody so much that they wanted to help them, and so on. By the feeling, they make choice. I don't feel to go to the other side. I feel to do this and this and these things here. So we cannot really command them to go to the other side. We can convince them to go to the other side. Now, when they get here, we call them lost souls or the earthbound spirits. So the first in the beginning, they don't really feel lost or they don't feel that there's any problem. They go like, okay, here, I'm in the light body. Uh, let me see what I can do. Nothing really, because you are in the light body. You are part of the soul energy that is invisible, but is detectable by the feeling, right? Some people feel cold and the chill. Some people feel all kinds of feelings when they feel the spirits around them. That is the only thing what they literally can do. And if they made a choice to stay here for particular reason, to help somebody, um, to <laughs> do something that may not be as the most positive way and so much on, they need a vehicle to carry on the mission that they assign themselves. See, this is not God's mission or the God's consciousness, which is the highest energy within this universe that guide us to be at the right place at the right time, that align this beautiful harmony in our life. They just completely disregard that, all this energy that is naturally pulling you upward in what we call heaven. And they says, no, nope, I'm going to make a decision for myself because there's a, it's not right. I left the body and I really need to finish my business or I'm really afraid to go to the other side. 
So here they are, the longer you stay here, the longer your density and emotions get lower and lower and lower and you may very well reach the demonic realm as well. It's not fun and it definitely doesn't feel good, but for whatever reason they may believe that is the only option and that's what they want to do because they are afraid or they are lost and they don't see that invisible door, they don't see the help anymore because they lose that capability for most of the time. So to experience life, these souls need to have vehicle, right? They need to have a body. We each get this one body for the lifetime, where your soul mind consciousness deposits itself by the bird into your body. You're going through many body uh, phrases through your life and you have a right to experience life. Now, depending on the where we are born, where are our family conditions, what are our soul contracts, that kind of the life we experience. Now, we're not gonna go into that right now. We are just want to establish the fact that your soul mind consciousness own this body, same as you will own your vehicle. It is that it gets you to the places and it helps you experience life through your five basic senses, smell, taste, sight, touch, and sound. So here you are. Now these earthbound spirits, you know, kind of looking and when there's a light, where you have the spiritual energy, you are more light or somebody that is very suitable to whatever mission they assign themselves or to some family members that they really wanted to spend a little bit more time with, that they felt that they didn't finish their business with. So they choose you. They have to make a choice, right? If I want to experience this life, or if I want to help you, or if I want to cause you misfortune, I need to have a body to act it through. Now, they didn't go to the other side. They cannot go into the newborn baby because that is totally uh, not possible whatsoever. So they have no access to embody the body so they attach themselves to us and they start experience the life through us now in the beginning it may feel as a beautiful energy like something that calm and helping you and so much on but the later on you may realize that you are not lucky or the bad things are happening to you you're becoming ill with something that doesn't make a sense and that may all be caused by earthbound spirits now, how does airbound spirits attach us to you? It needs invitation. It needs you to invite it into your house. Here, I want you to, for the fun of it, think about the vampire movies. Like we all have seen some kind of the vampire movies, right? Whenever they were scary or just fun or romantic. Always the vampire came and convinced you that you have to invite him or her into your house. In some of those older movies, you have them to mesmerize you with their eyes and hypnotize you. So you will do whatever they want. And what happened after, we all know. The point is, you invited this vampire energy in your body and in your energy field so you can start experience the life through you many of you do it unconsciously and i would say this is the biggest problem that's arising right now that realization that not everything is just you know from that cosmic and extraterrestrial energies but a lot of of these issues and problems you have may be because you have an earthbound spirit so how did you invite them in your body? If you had a, an imaginable uh, friend as a child, you know, some of them are definitely a beautiful beings of the light who come and spend time with you and enrich your life. But among them, you also found a pretty good number of the earthbound spirits. Oh, human beat me, the angel. Okay. Oh, sweetie, you are here and all sad. Would you like me to play with you? Would you like me to tell you a story? Would you like me to 
you know, sing you a song or something. And the little child goes, mm-hmm. There you go. You have an invitation. When we start working in our energy fields in the beginning, I think we all, um, I don't want to say we're a victim of these energies because we invited them in and we didn't know any better. So when you, you know, open your energy and you, you call in for your guides, for the angelic realm, for the benevolent extraterrestrials, for anybody who would like to help you. How do you know that it is who you are calling upon? How do you know when you feel that energy, literally, that it is what it is? I have met people who channeled the Jesus Christ. It definitely wasn't a Jesus Christ. And of course, you know, some of them really did. And there are many stories like that. They will come and if they choose you, they will pretend to be whatever it is that you want them to be. They will be your guide, they will be angel, they will be Jesus Christ, they will be Mary Magdalena. And you go like, oh my God, finally. Oh, and through all those years when I'm doing this, I have heard a story. Oh, I'll do anything, just use my body as a vessel. I'm a vessel of this divine light. And through me, do all these healings. Oh, you may just send out the invitation and did they really hear you in this cosmic consciousness? Cosmic consciousness is memory field and it's the field also of this benevolent extraterrestrial beings and it's the field of your memories from everything, you know, with your soul family and that. But what if they didn't hear you? What if the transition has been interrupted? And what if, even if they hear you before they answer to you, which can be really fast, right? There's this airbound spirit that says, oh, I am a healer. Yeah, yeah, I am a healer. And here, let me be with you and let me do these healings with you. And you feel excited and, and awesome. And some of your energy amplify for a little bit. But then you start to have these old feelings. You may feel depressed, you may feel paranoid, you may feel schizophrenic, you may feel like you are possessed, you may feel like you're getting ill. You may, I, I met the people who completely changed the way how they ate. They started to crave the different things. They started to dress in the different things because the spirit personality was slowly but effectively taking over the body here is the only exception in this and that goes in the souls exchange they are very rare actually so we're gonna leave that out but i'm gonna point out that there is an exception so the 99 person what i talk about are these spirit attachments so you invited them in in your energy in your work in your ceremonies or when you are desperate I want anybody to help me. Oh, uh, would you like me to help you? Mm -hmm. There you go. Now, there's a difference a little with, you know, with the family members, because that's usually so beautiful. And I will honestly say that the spirits don't even know how harmful to eventually it will be, the way how they wanted to express love and happiness and caring or bring some kind of the abundance to family members. When somebody from your family passes away, you're naturally going through the grieving process. You want to communicate with them desperately. And you may have a one or two communication with your true um, family, but then you may start meeting imposter spirit. That will be, again, the air-bounded spirits that will create the attachment to you. And that will, again, start changing your personality, your life. And because they did not cross to the other side, they did not cross to this cosmic consciousness field, the memory field, they cannot assist you from that level whatsoever. Now, if they cross on the other side, this cosmic consciousness 
aligned to the God consciousness. That is the highest energy up there. So you literally want to call for those who are connected to the God consciousness because they are connected with the cosmic consciousness and they will work with you. You need to learn to discern the energy, to test the energy. I have talked many times about the body pendulum and how to use it. That is the kinesiology testing. That is the best way to discern the energy. I personally discourage people from using the pendulum because that energy of the pendulum can be affected. But you know, there are a few that it really works for you. Find a way what works for you and learn to discern energy. Just because you feel it as beautiful, doesn't mean that it's gonna be beautiful and that's not gonna cause you problem. Just because you, you know, are so convinced and so much want to talk to Jesus Christ. It may not be, you know, what is it that you want it to be. Now, here is the solution, because I want you to think about it. It's airbound spirits, or get the airbound spirits. It's probably something like I send my cat into the backyard, and if I will not use the free protection on him, he's going to bring a lot of fleas home. So think of them as the fleas, you know, as some kind of the parasites. And again, even if they attach themselves for the best possible reasons to you, they do become that vampire, parasite, draining kind of the energy and they need to cross to the other side or get out of you. So here is a solution. Over good 20 years I'm doing this, I have tried many various things. And here I'm giving you the cream over the top. In the end, it's actually super simple. You invited that energy in and you have to uninvite it energy out of your body and out of your field just like that you have to take away invitation you may spend lots of money for people cleansing you and you know doing all this kind of the energy work but if you do not uninvite if you don't take away that invitation they're just gonna go for the little bit and they're gonna bounce back to you so let's say in my session, when we find there is something, I guide you that you will say this, I am uninviting you. Now, here I came up with this little um, sentence, what I say, and you may very well create your own. I am uninviting all the attached spirits, energy, entities, and beings that are attached to me and that are not aligned with the will of God. That means they didn't cross on the other side and they are not aligned to that highest energy. So, one more time. I am uninviting all the spirits attachments, energy, entities and beings that are attached to me and that are not aligned with the will of God. Now you will command them. Go to the light. Go to God or return back to earth where you came from. Be firm, really mean business to it. You know, stamp your foot if you have to. This body belongs to you. This is your birthright. And from here you can create anything that you want to. But you need to be yourself and not affected, not only by our family and society, but also by this spirit who desperately want to live a life through you. So once you take the invitation, you give them a choice. Here is the light, go to the light. At that moment, right away, the light does open and there is that temporary help who says, all right, I guess you stood there for a little bit. Here is the helping hand to help you go to the other side. When I say to God, that means exactly the same thing. When I said, return back to earth where you came from, that means to that earthly lower energies, because they still have a choice, a free will. They have to go to the other side based on the free will. Sometimes I spend the time with the spirits and I listen to them and I feel them and I explain them that they don't have to be afraid or that it's okay what have happened, that they will not be judged, they will not be punished. They're just going to go, you know, through their lessons. 
sometimes they need a little assurance they need that compassion that it is okay to go to the other side so you if you feel the spirits if you if you have that ability to communicate even if you don't you can tell them there's your family there is love there is light there is a way to a new life of course you have to go through all this recycling bin and so much on but there is a way to the new life and that's as simple as that you will uninvite them and you give them a choice go to, to the light go to god or return back to earth where you came from now here we're going to play with the language a little bit as you know the language is english language is my second language but i love english and i love to play with the words now because before i used to say as well return back where you came from well i came from you this is my house you invited me and you just invited me back in when i talk about it and sure like me i want you to think about those things we not only blindly believe but we also will think about those things i am uninviting you and i'm not gonna send you where you came from because mm, you came from my body so I return you back to the earth. That's mean to those lower realms and the soul will have to decide whenever it will be time for it to cross on the other side. We can't control it and we can't control what's going to happen with the soul or with the other people that may possibly attach to itself too. But at this point, you need to clear yourself. It's like when you are in the airplane and the, you know, the oxygen mask goes on, they always tell you, you need to first put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on the family. That is the way of the survival. That is also a way of thriving, which is the fifth dimensional energy. Why do I mention what God? So here's the fun part. And this starseed community, many people have problem with the word God. G-O-D, God. Many years back, I couldn't even say that word. I'm like, oh, okay, Palladians and cosmic energy and so much on, but God is probably the biggest scheme that there is. Over the years, we all learn and we mature and we start to think a little bit differently. God's energy, God's consciousness is the highest consciousness that created this universe, which we can't explain. And that is like a wind to our sails. If you align yourself to this energy, you will start these beautiful, harmonious things happening in your life. Um, as many of you know, I have returned from India from over the holiday, winter holidays, and that's what we were practicing. And I see it in my life, and it's actually phenomenal that alignment, that harmony, the way of the understanding. It is not a guide. It is not Pleiadian. It is not angelic realm. Yet it is everything that I just mentioned. But what I say, what I mean, that God is not one man, one person, one entity, one being. It is this most profound energy that I don't think we know the explanation of it. But that profound energy is within every one of us. That profound energy is with every soul that there is or exists. We all will return to the source, to the God. So the spirits, they know, they know you. That you can't even pronounce God. And it's like, oh God, you know, that love of vibrational kind of the thing. It's all about the frequency. If I can feel a love for God, that's the highest available frequency. Up there, if I says, okay, go to God, I mean, God just mess up with all of us because it doesn't take care of us. Why are these things happening to us? Mm, it's not the highest available energy. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. We, we're gonna stay with your God. I was thinking of how do we connect with God's energy on earth? Of course, we feel it. But again, as I told you, I want you to test the energy and I want you to look for the logical answer. Sort of, you know, that embrace that intellectual part of you and the spiritual part of you, make it into this beautiful merge in those twin flame energies. So 
as I was thinking about it, how can I see with my eyes God in this realm? How can I hear the God in my realm here on the earth, right? How I can touch the God, how I can taste God, how I can smell God. Sounds kind of odd as I'm saying it, but what I name as just the five basic senses. Same as the spirit want to experience the life through your body, through your five basic senses, which we all experience life through. That way we must be able to perceive the God's energy through his five basic senses that will solidify our pure belief that this energy exists. It's the most benevolent, loving and beautiful energy. And then one day, while cleaning my backyard, I look at the sun and it hit me. It is the sun. Now, everything you see, let's say, in Earth or, you know, in our close by universe, may have been co-created by alien beings or by ourselves. You cannot say that the God grows the potato, like, you know, it gives you the sun, it gives you the rain, it gives you the condition but you are the one who grows potatoes and so on. And so one thing I think we can all agree that in this place that we can see, one thing that we cannot control, we cannot make it better or the worst, is the sun. It is the sun energy. You can smell the sun Let's say I love the smelling the pine trees in the summer, you know, when that sun is just like warming the forest and the pine cones and the pine trees uh, smell just beautiful to me. You can taste the sun. When you grow your vegetables, um, your fruit trees, when you eat something just out of your garden, you can smell it. You can taste the sun, the warmness of the sun on your fruit or vegetables. You can see the sun with your eyes, like be colorful, right? But we can all see and recognize sun. We can touch the sun. How do you touch the sun? When the sun warms up your skin and you touch it, you are touching the sun. When there's something warm up or that's how I feel it, to warm up. You are touching the sun. The sun is touching you and you can touch it. Or, if that's really hard to believe, then you touch the fruit that grew from that sun energy. You are touching the sun. How do you heal it in your everyday life? When the light comes out, when the sun rises, there's always all these sounds in our life. When the night is quiet, you just hear the night creatures, right? How many of you who have these issues with the spirits are afraid of night? Now, how many of you sleeps with the light on? How many of you just cannot wait until that sunrise again? Why? Because they don't want you to figure it out. That the sun is God's energy. Now, a while ago, I got the book, The Ancient Religion of the Sun, and it's written by Lara Atwood. It is a wonderful book. It's a research book. Through, you know, she went through so many books and information that she had found, and she literally co collected all this, all this knowledge about the people who worship the sun. Why did they worship the sun? why there are sun disks, uh, pictures of the sun in the ancient Egypt. Our soul is capable to perceive messages or send out the messages in pictures. Our mind, you know, final kind of the stories, but a true com soul communications come in pictures. So these ancients left the pictures, pictograms, hieroglyphs to show us Focus on the sun, because if you start looking at it, it's going to click inside of you. 
The sun is part of the God's consciousness here for us in our place here. It gives life. It gives life. And no one can control the sun. We can control so many other things in this world. And a, and a moon to me is questionable. Oh, we're not even going to go there. But the sun is a true God's energy, true God's consciousness. So once you do this release, and if you are really interested about, you know, learning about the religions of the sun, again, this is a fabulous, fabulous book that I would recommend to you to read. Then, once you do your uninvitation, I mean, seriously, it takes just two minutes. You uninvited this energy, attachment, spirits, like name it any way you want to name it. Send them to the light, to God, or return back to earth where you came from. Then, if you can walk outside and stand in the sun, if you cannot imagine that you are sun, we all can imagine the sun. It's not a hard thing to do. And really connect with that sun energy. Connect with that God's energy. It has nothing to do with religions. It has nothing to do, you know, with the beliefs and the punishments and whatever is going to happen to you. Can you connect it to it? Can you not connect it to it? It is just the sun that was created by the highest force of death. That raise your energy. That I can call God. And, you know, the God consciousness. So when I think of the God now, I think of the sun. It makes me smile because I love sun. I love warmth. And even if you don't, you need sun to survive. We need that daylight, you know. We need that. Otherwise, we're going to go to the ice age. I mean, know what happened in ice age. So it is, in the end, actually really simple. I'm uninviting them. I welcome the sun energy. I welcome God's energy inside of me. Mm. Now, do you think that the spirit likes the God's energy? They did not cross to the other side because they did not want to be aligned to that energy. Again, for what I as reason, they were not ready. So... You raise your consciousness, you raise your energy, and you will get off their list. Because, you know, they are looking for another one who they are going to attach themselves to. There's a lot of people around the earth, right? Now, I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean it that we all need to figure it out. And that's going to help us collectively to bring the spirits to the other side. Because they will try. Okay, they, they can go through another life. I mean, the life have not end on the earth. It's going to go on for the thousands of years. And we each have a chance to figure it out how we're going to go to the ascension. And it doesn't honestly matter if it's in this lifetime or next lifetime. And I hear you, you are tired and exhausted and so much on. But it doesn't matter. You are going to get to that God's consciousness when your time comes when you are ready. You can slow it down or you can speed it up. And that's how it works. Very simply and very beautifully. Now with that, I want you to try, to give it a try. If there is literally an issue and problem that you have this attachment, you need to do it for about two weeks. That's what works for me. It's not that I do it once and it is done. You know, the spirits are stubborn. Think of them, you like shove them out of the house, but they are lurking by your window, says, would you get me in? Would you get me in? Would you get me in? Uh, you know, we used to be friends. And you go like, no, 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 no. This is not working for me. We are getting out. So be stubborn. Do it at least once a day. Do it as a practice of your you know, cleansing as a part of your cleansing routine. Again, the saying that few words and feeling yourself with the sun can literally be a one minute routine that will change your life. 
again, people are going to charge you a lot of money for this. So here you have it, top of the cream that I have found after 20 years of the search. And I hope that it will work for you. Please share all the comments. If it works for you, share it with others. The more we collectively work on it, the better this place will be. And they are going to have a good life as well. They will find their own way. In a way, these airbound spirits are our brothers and sisters that just got lost. So with that, I sending you love and light from my heart to yours.